Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, 102nd Online Spintronics Seminar. We hope you had a wonderful summer. It is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today. Dr. Weiwei Ling is a professor at the uh, School of Physics in Southeast University. He received his PhD degree in condensed matter physics from Nanjing University in 2007. He was a postdoc researcher in uh, Nancy University, University of Paris Sud and uh, Johns Hopkins University until 2019. His main research contributions include the spin transport in antiferromagnetic insulators, spin charge conversion, tunnel magneto seaback effect, electric con field control of magnetic domain wall motion, and uh, current induced magnetization, magnetization reversal in spin orbit systems. He has uh, 46 publications in journals including Nature Physics, Nature Communications, and uh, BRL. And today uh, he will bring us a talk in one of his uh, recent nature physics paper. Um, Professor Ling, please. Okay, thanks, Xing. So I'm very delighted to give a presentation in this Spintronics seminar. So today my topic is the spin swapping in an uh, antiferromag. So this has been done several years ago when I was postdoctor in Johns Hopkins. So with, uh, with the colleges collaborating and with, from the University of Texas at Austin and uh, also Northeastern University. So um, now I'm working in School of Physics at Southeastern University in Nanjing in China. Okay, let's introduce the transport of the spin angular momentum. So, so today, so my outline is the blue spin current phenomena first. Following, I will introduce the spin seaback effect and also spin hole effect. Then I will introduce the, our experimental observation of the spin seaback effect in canted antiferromagnetic insulate, lantern ferrite, platinum heterostructures. Then we will introduce the evidence of spin swapping in lantern ferrite platinum heterostructures. Finally, I will give a summary. So we know the electron. Electron has negative charge, also the spin angular moment. So in spin chonics, the intensive interest to study the transport of spin angular moment. For example, spin wave or we call magnet, and delivers the angular moment spin of spin. So this has no net charge flow. So we call it true spin current. This is technically a physics interesting and the petitioner has advantage of the application because of the low power dissipation. Experimentally, how to generate the true spin current? So one of the methods is we use, we utilize the magnet insulate peak, and then we put the microwave to get the ferromagnetic resonance. So the spin dynamics will excite the spin wave. So this generates the pure spin current. So this is called spin pumping. Another way we can apply a temperature gradient across the magnet insulator E with the metal attached, okay? So this is called spin seaback effect. Another way to generate spin current is to use the charge current. So the charge current can convert to spin current. We inject the charge current, spin up, spin down, move in opposite way, okay? So this generates a spin current transfer spin current okay, along a certain direction. So this has been known as spin pore effect. So this has been early predicted by Michel Diakonov and his colleagues in 1971. So the inverse effect of the spin hole effect, so we can convert the spin current to charge current. So this can be used to detect the spin current. So when a spin current flow, so it's the spin up, spin down will move towards in the 
in the same side. So this induced a charge current. So this has been known as the inverse spin hole effect. So this also be proposed early by Michel Diaconov in 1983. So this expression writes the correlationship between the charge current and the spin current. There is a coefficient set SH, so this is called spin hole angle, measure the coefficients of the conversion of the spin current and the charge current. The sigma is the spin index, so JS spin current cross sigma. So, okay. So now we talk about the spin seaback effect. Spin seaback effect is, uh, is, is one of important approach to generate pure spin current. So, for example, we can use the EEG. So this is a very mag insulate uh, attached uh, a metal. Okay, we apply a temperature gradient vertically and apply a magnetic field in plane and measure the transverse voltage. So here is a typical result. So the metal we can use platinum. Platinum has a positive spin hole angle, so we can see the sizable uh, transverse thermal voltage for the platinum E. So if we use the same MGU layer, MGU is a non-magnet insulate. So it will be completely block the spin current. So there are no detectable transverse thermal voltage with platinum MGU E. So we can also use the tungsten. Tungsten is negative spin hole angle. So we can immediately see the detect the transverse voltage. The, reverse the sign, so it become negative because the spin hole angle of, of tungsten is negative. So this demonstrates, this is really measure the pure spin current phenomenon. So this is called longitudinal spin seaback effect. So this expression, so the detect the inverse spin hole voltage is proportional to the pure spin current, okay, across the spin index. So this is a coefficient of spin hole angle. So if we do the angular dependence, okay, we can see a sine dependence. Okay, here theta is the angle between the applied field uh, relative to the voltage direction. Okay, this is in implant, implant angle. So it's a sine dependence because the, this equation, the spin current, okay, cross the spin index. So this is a typical behavior of the longitudinal spin seaback and the inverse spin hole voltage. So this has been intensely studied. So let me remind that we have the vertical temperature gradient. We can measure the longitudinal spin seaback effect. So we can see the sizable thermal voltage for the platinum E. Okay, how about the implant temperature grid? So if we if we apply an implant temperature grid along the E, okay, we apply a perpendicular magnetic field. We measure the transverse thermal voltage. Okay, what happens? So in literature, this is the result. Okay, it's a negligible thermal voltage can be detected even at, at more than six Tesla field. Okay, this already shown in the literature. So it's a very tiny, okay, large difference with the vertical temperature grid. Okay, just negligible small thermal voltage with the implant temperature gradient and the perpendicular field for the platinum E. Okay, if we apply an implant temperature gradient, also the applied field is implant. Okay, along the the temperature implant temperature grid. So this is a, a configuration, so-called transverse spin seaback effect. So here we see the result. There are no detectable magnetic dependence thermal voltage. Okay, in this configuration. Okay, and either a detect with the platinum close to the hot side, or close to the cold side. There are no detectable magnetic 
thermal voltage with the in-plane temperature gradient, also the in-plane field for the platinum. Okay, the negligible spin signal in each platinum with in-plane temperature gradient. The no evidence of transverse spin feedback effect. Okay, so let's talk about the longitudinal spin feedback in anti -fire. So this has been interest in recent years. So here we, I show the result with chromium oxide. Okay, chromium oxide is anti ferrum insulate. So at the low field, the no measurable thermal voltage. Okay, but at high field, above the spin flop field, so the, the detectable thermal voltage and increase with the field. So we need to note in this material, the, the net magnetization is, is very small. Okay, it's 0 0.05 per magneton per chromium ions. So it's a negligible net magnetization. Okay, this is, this is for, for the technical advantage. There's no strength here. So this is the advantage for the anti -fibromat. Spin CBA effect also observed in magnet fluoride platinum structure. Okay, so we can also see with increased field, we can measure a longitudinal spin CBA voltage, but it requires high magnetic field above several tesla, okay? And it's very hard to switch the spin in such anti magnet. Okay, one may have the question, okay, can we have, have anti-ferrum insulate, okay? Can be easy to switch, okay? Nearly zero neck magnetization. Switch is small magnetic field. So this is technically useful, okay? And it can be electronically detected. Okay, is there such anti ferrum insulate? Now, from the textbook, we know there is a family of the anti ferrum insulate. Okay, it's called the real earth osophoride. Okay, here is one of the material. It's a lantern ferrite. Okay, this is a perovskite structure. It is P-type antifiramid. And the near temperature is, is high, it's about 760 Kelvin. Okay. The, the spin is, is very close to the A-axis. Okay, very, it's almost nearly too close to the A-axis. So if we measure the magnetic loop of this lantern fire crystal, okay, we can see the, the loop, okay, along the C axis. So we can see the magnetization can be switched in the field as small as in the orders of 10 millimeters. So not very large field, okay. And this is the main magnetization we can measure. And if we apply the field along the A axis, we can measure a smaller magnetization loop, okay, smaller. And if we apply the field along the B axis, okay, then no detectable magnetization loop can be found. So in this material, lantern fire, the intrinsic camping angle, about 0.5 degree, okay, slightly Canting towards the C axis. Okay. So this gives a small net magnetic moment. Okay. We can see it's 0 0.04 magnetum, a bore magnetum per eye. Okay. It's, it's, it's very small. So it's tiny magnetization. It can be switched by a small magnetic field. Okay. We can see the schematic. The, if we apply the positive field and the reverse the apply field to the negative, so the spin flip 180 degree. Okay. In lantern ferrite, the two spin structures is called gamma four and gamma two. 
Okay, gamma in gamma four spin structures. So the small net magnetization is along the C axis. So we call gamma four. They're also smaller magnetization, okay, tiny magnets along the A axis, as I shown for the magnetic loop before. So we need to remember in this material, we have twin spin structure. Okay, we have twin spin structure. So now I show the thermal voltage measurement in lantern ferrite platinum heterostructure. So we polish the lantern ferrite single crystal and uh, deposit three nanometer platinum by magneton sputtering. Okay, so here I show the lantern ferrite single crystal, the normal of the surface is A or B axis. Okay, the C axis is in plane, is in plane. So now we apply a vertical temperature grid. Okay, we apply an in plane field and detect the voltage in transverse direction. We apply a vertical temperature gradient about 10 Kelvin per, per millimeter. Here I show magnetic dependence of the transverse thermal voltage. Okay, so we can see clear the sharp switching, okay, with, with, with the magnetic loop. So this is a thermal voltage loop and the loop it can be reversed when we rotate the magnet field 180 degrees. And the, the magnet dependence of thermal voltage is negligible small in this configuration. So in this sample is 120 degrees. Okay. Here I show the angular dependence. Okay, we can see two distinct voltage level, okay, positive and negative. So when we rotate the magnet field, zero to 330 degrees. So the, the voltage is transition between these two voltage level, okay. This is completely different with the angular dependence of the longitudinal spin seaback voltage in platinum E. So as I shown before, so this is a sign dependence. So in lantern fire platinum, it's completely different. So we know the intrinsic panting angle. Okay, so the the net moment is mainly around along the C axis. Okay, the C axis. So the measured thermal voltage is mainly related to the net magnetiz magnetization along the C axis. Okay, the positive voltage we say is is related to the the magnetization along the positive C axis. So the negative voltage is related to the magnetic moment along the negative C C axis. So the voltage is mainly related to the net magnetization along the C axis. Okay, the magnetization in this counted antiferromagnet. It's mainly along the C axis, does not follow the field rotation. Okay, this is different with the common ferromagnet or ferromagnet. So the in in Euro ferromagnets, the magnetization we are rotate follows applied field direction if it's saturated. But in this canted antiferromagnet, because the intrinsic canting, so the the net moment does not follow the magnetic field, okay? So this is why we have this with step-like uh, voltage, the angular dependence, okay? So here I show the cursivity, okay? We can see the switching field, the cursivity as a function of the of the applied field angle, okay? There, there is a minimum, there is a minimum of the cursivity. Also, there is a there is a maximum. So there's is is follows one over cosine alpha uh, dependence. Okay, the the minimum of the the switching field is corresponds to the the direction of the c axis. So in this sample, the c axis is in plane, 
and has 30 degree uh, from the edge of the sample. So if we estimate the transverse thermal electric coefficient okay, with the, uh, the voltage, transverse voltage over the D, D is the separation of the two voltage electrodes, okay, the temperature gradient. We can estimate, so it's 0 0.01 microvolt per Kelvin. Okay, so it's not large, okay, compared to the ferromagnet or, or, or like ferromagnet insulator E platinum. But if we consider this tiny magnetization in this antiferromagnet, so it's, it's not very small. Okay. So now, is this measured transfer voltage related to the inverse spin hole effect or in this uh, measurement, does it mean the lantern far right we measure the spin feedback effect? So I show the result with different metal is platinum, tungsten, and the copper. Okay, platinum has a positive spin hole angle. Tungsten has negative spin hole angle. Copper has negligible spin hole angle. So we show the and we can see the result. Okay, for platinum is positive voltage, tungsten is negative. Copper is negligible magnetic dependence of thermal voltage. Okay, so we can see the angular dependence. It's also is transition between the two voltage level. Okay, positive for platinum, negative for tungsten. It's opposite sign for for platinum tungsten. This means it's really the measured voltage depends on the spin hole angle of the material. So for copper, that's negligible voltage. So this demonstrates the measured voltage is related to the longitudinal spin feedback effect in lanternal fire. Okay, the de detected voltage, it is inverse spin hole voltage. Just now I show the result with the A or B axis oriented lantern fire single crystal. So now I show the normal of the surface is the C axis. Okay, it's the C axis oriented lantern fire. So we also deposit three nanometer platinum. Here we also apply a vertical temperature grid, implant magnetic field, and the transverse thermal the voltage we can measure. So what's the result? Here we see the no detectable magnetic dependence of thermal voltage in this configuration. Okay, I rotate uh, the, the, the different angle, so we can't detect any magnetic dependence of the thermal voltage. So we need to keep in mind, okay, the tiny magnetization in the lantern fire single crystal. This measurement, okay, uh, this is a Victor VS um, measurement. The applied field is in plane, okay, the applied field is in plane. So we can measure the magnetic loop of the in plane magnetization. It's small. At the same time, we can also record the magnetization perpendicular to the, to, to the applied field. This means along the C axis, we can see uh, a larger magnetization loop. Okay, this is along the C axis. So this can be understood because this, so this is the intrinsic canting along the C axis in, in lantern far right. Okay, so this means there is a magnetization loop in this configuration, but no detectable of the magnet dependence of the thermal voltage. Okay, negligible concrete contribution of the magnetization along the A-axis to the longitudinal spin feedback effect, okay? So how about the implant temperature grid? So right now, I all show the thermal voltage measurement with the out of plane temperature grid, okay? So now, same sample. So the C-axis oriented lantern fire single crystal with three nanometer platinum. We apply an implant temperature grid, okay? We, we apply the field also in plane, and we measure the transverse voltage. 
the pied implant temperature gradient is about 3.3 Kelvin per millimeter. Here is the result. We can see clearly the thermal voltage loop. Okay, so the square loop uh, when the pi field okay, along along the uh, the temperature gradient. Okay, and uh, the loop can be reversed when the applied field uh, rotate uh, 180 degree. The magnetic dependence will be small around uh, 80, 80 degree in in this sample. Okay. One may note that there is a shift in, in, in certain uh, angle, applied field angle, okay? So uh, this shift, so it looks like exchange bars, okay? It may relate it to the exchange coupling in the anti domains in this bulk lantern ferrite single crystal, okay? Here is the thermal voltage as a function of the applied field angle. So we, we can also see this step like uh, angular dependence, the voltage transition between the two voltage level. Okay? So it's related to the, the canting moment along the C axis. The, the net magnetization does not follow the rotation of the applied magnet field. So keep in mind, in this, in, in this sample, there are no detectable voltage with the auto plane temperature grid. Okay, just now I already showed. So this means the negligible contrib contribution of auto plane temperature grid. Okay, when we apply an in plane temperature grid for this environment. Okay, so experimentally, it's hard to complete it to get rid of. The, the, the presence of the auto plane temperature grid when we apply an in plane temperature grid. But in, in this sample, okay, the negligible contribution of the thermal voltage for the auto plane temperature grid. So this is completely different from the longitudinal spin C back, back because this magnetic thermal voltage has been measured with the in plane temperature grid. Okay, we can estimate the transverse thermoelectric coefficient. Okay, so in this configuration with the implant temperature grid, is about 0.15 microvolt per Kelvin. Okay, this is comparable with the announced non state effect in such as iron. Also, the same order with the longitudinal spin C by coefficient of the platinum. But this has been measured in anti ferrimid insulator with negligible net magnetization. So now I show the, the same sample with the C-oriented lantern far right. We apply an in-plane temperature grid, but with the out of plane applied field. Okay. So here is the result. We can see a square loop with a sharp switching uh, with small magnet field, okay. The, the, the amplitude of the thermal voltage uh, is more than one microvolt, okay. It's not so small. So the measured thermal voltage is mainly related to the net magnetization along the C-axis. So here is perpendicular magnetization. So again, so this is different from the longitudinal spin C back, also different with the transverse spin C back effect. Okay? So this is implant temperature gradient perpendicular magnet magnetic field. Is this result is really depends on the implant temperature gradient? Okay. Here I show uh, if if we if we change the direction of the implant temperature grid. So it's a positive implant temperature gradient. We can see it's a positive loop. If we reverse the temperature gradient, so we can see the thermal voltage loop also reversed. So the voltage reversed with the direction of the temperature gradient. Okay, this clear indicate that the spin signal is due to the implant temperature gradient. So now I show the 
the voltage parable, okay? So if the voltage parable is close to the hot side or close to the cold side, okay, there's no, no pronounceable difference, okay, between these two configurations, okay? It does not depend on so the, the voltage probable uh, relative to the hot side or the cold side. Okay, this also indicates the negligible contribution of the out of plane temperature gradient. So it's different from the transverse spin feedback effect, also different with the non local spin feedback effect. Because if for the transverse or the non local spin feedback effect, so the, the thermal magnetic dependence of thermal voltage will change sign okay, for uh, either close to the hot side or close to the cold side. So our result in lantern far-right is different. So we also replace the platinum um, by the tungsten with the implant temperature gradient configuration. Okay, we can see the measure of transverse thermal voltage indeed reverse the sign for the platinum and the tungsten. So we also insert a very thin copper between the lantern ferrite and the platinum. So we can measure pronounceable thermal voltage with the copper insert layer. So this result demonstrates this voltage is really due to the pure spin current. Also, the voltage indeed is inverse spin core effect. Also, the insert copper result indicates its negligible magnetic proximity effect in this measurement. Okay. To further check if there are magnetic, magnetic proximity effect. So we did the XMCD measurement. Okay, here we show the XMCD measurement for the lantern far right. It is no detectable XMCD uh, signal uh, from the ion. We also check the XMCD result uh, for, uh, of the platinum, okay, because we deposit platinum on the lantern far right. There are also no detectable XMCD of platinum. So the no detectable XMCD signal for both I and the platinum. So this indicates the negligible magnetic proximity effect at the lantern far right platinum interface. So we also carry the measurement to use the charge current replace the implant temperature gradient. So we apply a current flow in the platinum. And then we apply the perpendicular magnetic field and then measure the transfer voltage. So this is the configuration of the whole measurement. Here is the result. The no detectable uh, whole effect, or we can say no enormous whole effect in lantern far right platinum heterostructures. So this can exclude any charge current effect in this measurement. So we really measure the pure spin current filament. So let's compare so between the, the egg and the lantern fire. Okay, what's the difference? So for the out of plane temperature gradient, so we can get the longitudinal spin feedback effect in egg. Okay, it's a ferromagnetic insulate. For the in plane temperature gradient, the no spin signal can be detected in egg platinum. Okay. For lantern fire, right, so I already showed. There is a longitudinal spin feedback effect with the out of plane temperature gradient. So we also detect the spin dependent thermal voltage with the in plane temperature gradient. But what is the effect? So it's different with the previous known spin transport filament. So what is the possible mechanism of the spin current in lantern ferrite? So this is an interesting question. Okay, is this magnum non state effect? Okay, magnum non state effect. This means apply a temperature gradient 
okay the if is the vertical uh, magnetization component okay for the anti -firement. so there in plane spin current okay flow perpendicular to the temperature gradient also the the the, the magnetization in the anti -firement. But we need to note, so this induced the spin current by the magnum Nernst effect is implant spin current. Okay. In our configuration for lantern ferrite, we apply an implant temperature, we, can, we apply a perpendicular field. We detect the voltage in the platinum. This means the voltage is due to the out of plane spin current. So the detector voltage must relate to the the spin current across the interface okay vertically flow be, uh, across the interface of the lantern ferrite plate okay so this different from the magnum nernst effect okay what's the possible mechanism so we apply an implant this is the typical result okay the implant temperature gradient Perpendicular magnetic field, we measure the transverse voltage. Okay, the implant temperature grid can induce an implant current or magnum current along the x axis with the spin polarization along the z axis because in lantern ferrite is intrinsic counting along the z, 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 z axis, it's flung along the c axis. We detect the transverse thermal voltage in the platinum via the inverse spin hole effect. This means we detect the, the, the inverse spin hole voltage is due to the out of plane spin current with the spin index in plane. Okay, the spin current flow along the z axis with the spin polarization along the x axis. This is how we detect the voltage in plane along the y-axis because the, the, the transverse voltage along y-axis is proportional to the spin current Js along the z-axis cross the spin index along the x-axis. This means with the in plane temperature grid, we generate a spin flowing along the x-axis with the spin polarization Along the z axis, this is out of plane polarization. And we detect the spin flowing along the z, z, z axis with the spin polarization along the x axis. Okay. We can write the spin current along x axis with spin polarization along the z, z axis. It seems transformation to the spin current along the flowing along the z-axis with the spin polarization along the x-axis. So this consisted with the so-called spin swapping. Okay. This is overlooked previously for, for the spin transport. Okay. But this already proposed more than 10 years ago, also by Diakonov. Okay. One may ask the question, what's the consequence of the spin current? We already know the spin, if you follow a spin current, it will induce a charge current. Okay. The spin up and the spin down will move towards the same side. Okay. This leads to a transverse charge current. Okay. This is already known. It's inverse. In fact, in 2009, Michel Diakono, who early predicted the spin hole effect, also describes the equation for the uh, for the four spin transport. Okay, here there is a term. Okay, the third term. This indicates the interchange of the spin polarization direction and the spin flow direction. Okay, this has been overlooked previously. Okay, from this equation, so we know the 
there will no spin current if inject to along along let's say x axis. Okay, the spin up and the spin down move in opposite way, and it's possible induced not only a, a charge current, a transverse charge current, but also a trans transverse spin current. Okay, with the interchange of the spin polarization direction and the spin flow direction. Okay, the spin polarization along the z axis flowing along the x axis will transform to the to the spin current with the spin index along the x axis and the flow in the z axis towards the z axis. Okay, this induced a transverse spin current. This caused spin swapping. This is due to the spin orbit interaction. Okay. From the equation, we can know that it exists already in the first born exprimation. So this is more robust than the spin chart coupling. Okay. This is has been overlooked before, but we learn from the uh, Diakonov's paper. So in our configuration, okay. I already showed we apply an implant temperature gradient. Okay, so the implant spin current with the perpendicular spin polarization can transform to the spin current flow out of plane, but with the implant spin polarization. So this spin swapping can be induced by the spin orbit coupling. Or in this material, lantern ferrite, this, there is a DMI interaction. So the spin of the coupling in the bulk lantern ferrite and all the lantern ferrite plant in interface will contribute to the spin swapping. Also, as I mentioned before, so there are twin spin structure in this canted anti ferromagnet insulate lantern ferrite. Okay, so there are implant temperature, temperature gradient induce the implant spin current, okay, with the spin polarization along the Z axis. So this is induced by the implant temperature gradient along the X axis. Okay, copper is a coefficient between the temperature gradient and the spin current. So we can express the transformation of the spin current along the uh, z axis, the auto plane, and uh, the spin current in plane, okay, with the uh, spin swapping coefficient, okay, alpha. So the measured transverse voltage in the pattern we can express in, in this equation, okay, is, is proportional to the spin current along the z axis. It's related to the spin hole angle of platinum and the spin diffusing length of platinum, but also electrical conductivity. So we can estimate the transverse thermal voltage uh, coefficient. So I've already shown that it's all about 0 0.15 microvolt per kelvin. So then we can estimate the spin swapping coefficient in our configuration is about 0.3. Okay, that means 30%. So this is pronounceable. So in literature, recently, so there's theory study about the spin swapping in non-magnetic semiconductors and metals, okay, including uh, the uh, Diakonov and the Aulia Mahon group. The also theory paper describe the spin swapping in ferromagnetic metals. Okay, so all these paper of a theory proposal. In our work, we show the possible experimental evidence of the spin swapping in antiferromagnetic insulate, okay, lantern ferrite. So 
I would like to thank um, Professor Chen and uh, Dr. Jing Song Xu in Johns Hopkins. Okay. So also Professor Chen Shi Zhou and uh, and Tang Minghe and um, Bo Wen Ma from University of Texas at Austin. I would like to also thank Professor Greg Feet, Ma and Matt and Bernard Aaron from Northeastern University. So this work has been supported by NSF. Also, we have the uh, collaboration with XMCD measurement from Argon. So let, let me have a summary. Okay, I show the longitudinal spin CBAX effect observation in anti ferment insulate lantern ferrite platinum. I also show experimental evidence for the spin swapping in anti ferment insulate. So from this work, so we enable the electrical readout of room temperature magnetization switch, okay, very tiny magnetic switch but with very small field in anti ferment insulate. Okay, later so I refer to this nature physics paper. Okay, thanks for your listening. Thank you very much for this uh, interesting talk. Uh, this talk is open for questions. Oh yeah, let's uh, thank the speaker using the reactions button. Uh, if you have any questions on Zoom, please uh, use the raise hand function. Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch, you can type your questions in the chat box and uh, I will read it for you. Do we have any question here? Oh, yeah, Anna, please go ahead. Hello, uh, this is a very nice talk. Um, thank you so much for presenting this. I have a few questions. One of these is that uh, what is the dependence of the heater power and the uh, and the measured voltage? Is it linear or not linear? Yeah, so it's uh, it's increase with the thermal power. Okay, it's almost linear. Okay, so my uh, second question is that uh, uh, can we ex uh, also explain this uh, in the light of uh, thermal spin drag? For example, uh, as we know in some cases that uh, when we try to create intern thermal gradient, there is also outer plane gradient. So due to the outer plane gradient, uh, maybe uh, we are injecting outer plane spins uh, and they are dragged sideways uh, due to the in plane thermal gradient. Is it possible or not? Yeah, uh, I want to show that uh, in our lantern fire platinum, so even the presence of the out open temperature gradient, okay, during the implant temperature gradient, the negligible contribution of okay, the okay. thermal voltage mm -hmm. of the out open temperature gradient. Okay, thank you. And one more and last question. Uh, yeah, from this slide. So here you are showing that uh, the generator spins are uh, intrinsically, um, the intrinsically generated spins are out of the plane and uh, it is rotated in the plane, right? When it uh, moves from the insulator to the platinum or tungsten, correct? With the orange sign. Yeah, here in the in this picture. Uh, you, uh, you mean the opposite sign for the platinum and the tungsten? No, no, uh, my question is that uh, when, it is in, when it is getting injected in the heavy metal, uh, yes. does, uh, does the sign of the injected spin or does a sign of the uh, spin swapping depend on the heavy metal uh, spin hall angle sign? Uh, uh, no. So we I worry sure that with the implant temperature grade, okay, this, this, this is what spin swapping happens. So mm -hmm. we, can, we can measure the opposite uh, thermal voltage for the platinum and the tungsten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that I understood. So uh, I was trying to understand uh, the uh, the mechanism uh, for the spin swapping. So you mentioned that one needs the spin orbit coupling. So I was and also DMI and other things. I was trying to understand whether uh, it depends on the 
on the heavy metal adjacent to it or or that is intrinsically uh, from the insulating magnet insulating antiferromagnet. magnet but it seems like it is from the uh, intrinsically from the insulating magnet the, uh, yes so the, yeah. it's, it may attribute to the to the to the candid anti magnet, but also the interface okay 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 thank you thank you so much very really nice talk thank you okay professor shah please go ahead okay uh yeah thanks uh very nice uh talk link and uh, just have uh, uh, two questions yeah on this graph do you uh uh when you have in plane thermal gradient uh if you put the electromagnetic voltage along the thermal gradient uh, uh do you observe the voltage uh, you probably have talked about it, but i missed it Yes, uh, so uh, we we already measure the different uh, voltage direction relative to the temperature gradient. Okay, so the it will be large. So if if the the voltage direction is is perpendicular to the to the implant thermal gradient, and it will be small. If if the if the voltage is close to the direction of the thermal gradient. So you do observe the voltage along the thermal gradient, uh, it, even even it is small. It it's almost zero. So the magnetic dependence, is, so it's it it's it's very small. So the voltage along the thermal direction is very small. Yes. It's a negative. So the magnetic dependence is is very small. Well, I'm not. It's, I'm it's, not, it's I'm all not, negative. Yeah. negative. I'm not talking about magnetic uh, um, field dependent. I'm talking about if you switch the uh, lead along the thermal direction, do you observe the voltage? You know, you in, this, in with, this figure, you, in the, yeah, just in this figure, you basically yes. imagine the voltage uh, perpendicular to the thermal gradient. What happens yes. if you have a, uh, 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 do you have a voltage along the thermal gradient? Okay, you mean the feedback voltage? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can say, say that. Yes. Yeah, th that's negligible small. That, that's much smaller than than what I show here. It's very small. Okay. Yes, less than zero point one. Okay. So second question is: uh, uh, Can you comment on any domain? Do you have any domain in this uh, antiferromagnet, and uh, um, or is that just a single domain? You think? Uh. We believe there there is magnetic domain in antiferromagnet insulin. So if there is a far, uh, antiferromagnet domain and uh, you can sort of uh, using the magnetic field to switch it, or or it doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, you can align all the domain into a single domain uh, uh, regime using the magnetic. Uh, field. So so this 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 is the antiferromagnet domain. So right. this, this this will be complete. Complex. Okay, from the magnetic loop, we can see some some steps. So the, the, this also the the indication of the of the domain. Also, we we do the angular dependence. So we can we can see this one over uh, cosine alpha dependence. So this indicates the the dynamic the, the motion of the domain. Wall. Okay. But uh, in your hysteresis measurement, you see the step, but uh, also in the saturate, it looks like everything is saturated, right? Or, or BA is very yeah. small. So in that saturated region, you say it's a, a single domain? Mm. I'm not sure. Okay. Because we measure at, uh, at yeah. a low field. So, so field is not very large. Okay, so if you do have a multi-domain, do you think it will affect you um, experiment or doesn't matter? Uh, I don't think the magnet domain, anti ferromagnet domain has a large contribution for, for the measured uh, spin dependence of thermal voltage, at, at least in this magnetic field range. Okay, okay yeah, thanks. Uh, I have a question uh, along the theoretical prediction. Um, 
while the signal observed seems to bear the same symmetry as the spin swapping, uh, the is it really the same spin swapping theory pro proposed by Dyapnov? Because if I understand it correctly, all those theory developed so far are talking about uh, itinerant electrons and the spin orbit coupling of those uh, uh, moving electrons play a big role. In your system, it's an insulator. I know we talk about a spin current, but in reality, it's a magnum propagation. Do you yes. expect you have similar mechanism like the spin orbit coupling that can bend the, the magnum and even rotate the, 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 the corresponding spin direction, just like the spin swapping electrons? Yes. So, so here, uh, the, the theory, most theory is describes the spin swapping in the, in the electron system. So this is the conductor, okay? This is due to the, the, the electrons scattering, the charge, the spin, spin scattering. So here we are in the insulator. So this insulator is a magnet. Okay, so this also has, can have the, uh, the, 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 in, the, the interaction, okay, the, the magnet scattering uh, in, in the insulator. Also the spin up interactions also exist in the anti insulator system. So the similar so, uh, picture, magnum current, I think is, is similar to, to the spin current. So picture. just to make, to make the analogy in the spin swapping in, in, in metallic systems, it is electrons get scattered yes. by, effect, actually electron spins gets uh, precesses around the effective magnetic field from the spin orbit coupling. Yes. And uh, in this case, you're talking about the magnons, I guess also precess, around yeah. some effective field, yeah. also from spin orbit coupling? Yes. Okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have uh, some other comments, but uh, Kirill, please uh, go ahead and ask the next question. Yes, thank you, uh, very interesting talk. So I have uh, a question in the same direction as, as uh, Shin uh, asked about the mechanism. So, um, what is the um, role of the antiferromagnetic order primary here? So would the same effect be possible with the ferromagnet if this spin swapping occurs uh, at the interface, right? I, I believe it's allowed by symmetry in that case. So is it just for some reason small with ferromagnets or do you have some comments on this? So, so it's possible in in lantern fired bulk, also the interface. So so far we can't distinguish. So whether it's it's mainly from the bulk or the interface, but we believe it's related to the spin orbit coupling and uh, and the DMI interaction. So is there some evidence that it's coming from DMI rather than just spin orbit coupling at the interface? Uh, because in lantern ferrous, so in the, this counted anti ferrous, so there is a DMI interaction mm -hmm. in, in bulk, but also possible at the interface uh, with capping with the heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's not required to get spin swapping in the electronic subsystem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. So in principle, it could exist even if there is no DMI in the anti magnet even if it's a ferromagnet in principle. Yes, so yes. you mean ferromagnet insulin, right? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other question or comment? Just want to... Uh, actually follow up with uh, my question, actually very similar to Kirill's. So because you only observe in this effect in the uh, lanthanum ion oxide, which is canted antiferromagnet, your control sample is like YIG. And uh, so whatever mechanism it is, it has to only exist in lanthanum ion oxide, but does not exist in yttrium ion gannet. Is that correct? 
so uh, it's it's different with the uh, eek platinum okay uh, we we also observe in other um, real earth also ferrites such as samarium ferrite okay so the other other power sky uh, ferrite so not so only in you observe the similar spin swapping effect in other ferrite, just not yes. in EEG. Okay, Samaria. Not, not, a, not in EEG. Yeah. Not in EEG, okay. So, uh, I mean, this is probably to, to uh, assume to ask, but uh, do you expect it's uh, related to the damping that EEG has very small damping, so the spin of the coupling is weak? While in this same systems, and the systems, as you said, the samarium ferrite may have a larger spin orbit coupling. Um, for for this family of the rare earth also ferrite, so some of them has the twin spin structure. So as I mentioned, so they, this also a, 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 a unique feature. So that is a different with the ferrimetal insulate such as E. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other immediate question? If not, we still have another discussion session afterwards. Uh, if uh, Professor Lin is still awake, I think it's midnight for you. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, first, I want to thank everyone for participating. I want to thank you again to the speaker for the very interesting talk.